So last week I challenged you all to have a go at modeling this object here and as I've come to expect with these challenges you all did a superb job and I especially love some of the approaches that took a far more creative approach and had a lot more style to the finalized render so fantastic job to everybody there. Uh, but I just wanted to run you all through how I'd approach this. So I'll just go into a new file here. And so I actually start this out with a plane of all things. Uh, and if I just go into edit mode here, I'm just going to go ahead and subdivide this five times. Set to five. And the reason I do this is because this gives us exactly where I want all the circles to be. So I can just select five uh, vertexes. So three along this row, skip the middle row, and then two at the bottom here. And then using Control Shift and B, I can do a bevel on each of the vertices that I just selected. And so something like that. So I've only got squares at the moment, but what we can do in the bevel properties here is I can just bump these segments up to four. And then in the shape here, this will modify how it looks. So we don't want zero because that just gives us like a perfect square pretty much. Uh, but I found somewhere around 0.1 seems to work well. So they're still not perfectly circular, but we can fix that in a bit. Uh, for the time being, what I want you to do is go Control i so we'll invert the selection and we can just go ahead and delete the vertices. I'm just going to select the middle vertex of each of the circles, Control and plus to enlarge that selection, and I'm just going to delete those verts. And then just with the outer parts of the circles, I'm just going to go and use our circle from our loop tools, and now they're nice and circular. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything in half, bring in a plane, and I'm going to add a loop down the middle, and I'm also going to cut this in half. And as you can probably expect, we're going to go ahead and we'll bring in a mirror modifier and we'll enable clipping. So I'm going to use the plane to uh, create the exterior trapeze shape. So I'm just going to scale this down on the Y a bit because it's a little bit more narrow to the circles. And I'm going to bring this out on the exit a little bit. So somewhere like that. And just Control Shift and B, I'm just going to bevel these vertices at the top and I'll just bring the segments back down to one. So let's go something like that and then I'll just drag this vertex into the middle. And so that might be a little bit more narrow than the original idea, so I might just drag that out a bit. That'll be close. This isn't going to be the exact same as the version I've posted, I'm just eyeballing everything. Uh, so then what I want to do is go ahead and delete only the faces of this trapeze shape. Uh, so now we're just left with the edges on the outside and I just want to delete this middle edge because we don't need it. Cool, so now we can go ahead and start connecting everything together. And the first thing I want to do, probably seemed a little bit weird, is go and actually fill in a triangle. Uh, now don't worry, this is not going to cause us any problems. I know you're probably thinking, hang on, it's subdivision surface modeling, we need quads for everything. Uh, and you're not in the wrong line of thinking there. Uh, though what we're going to model is all on a flat surface, so tries and end gons aren't going to cause any uh, surface deformations for our shading, uh, so it's all good where it is. We do have a bit of a problem on the fact that we have it sitting on the edges of our model at the moment, but we'll also address that, so bear with me with the triangle, trust me, we'll make it work. Um, and so we'll just go ahead, we'll start to fill things in, and I'm just going to select all of these, extrude, bring it into the middle. And so we've got another triangle there. Just going to fill that in. Actually, I'll bring it out to about there. Just I don't want to stretch the face much further than that because I'll just show you that's a really, really thin face. I don't think that's great practice. Mind you, we could probably get away with it. I'm just not going to encourage that. I'll fill this in. And once again, just going to fill to there because I think that's stretched enough as it is. Cool. So now we just need to connect this interior part to the exterior. So I'm going to connect these vertexes together and I think they just, they're sort of nicely in line with one another. This one here, there's a bit too much of an angle to it. These to me just look like it sort of sits a bit more naturally. So I'm just going to connect those. Uh, fill an edge in there. And then what we've got four verts sitting in the middle here. So I'll just go ahead and add in four verts to the top. And then we can nicely fill all of that in. Same here, I kind of feel like this vertex would connect nicely with the vertex in the middle. So I'll just go ahead, Control R to add one in. Then we can fill that in. And then similar thing at the bottom here, I kind of feel like these vertexes line up somewhat nicely. Those ones obviously because they're straight. And then we've got four verts there, so just go Control R, cut in another four verts to the exterior edge. And just go fill those in. And then we've got three verts here, so I'll just go ahead and cut in three verts to the outside. 
And I can go ahead and fill that in. Cool, so now we've all got it filled in, albeit there are some triangles, uh, but for the most part, this is going to work exactly the way we want it to. The only problem we have at the moment is, much like I said earlier, we've got these poles connecting on the edges of our circles, uh, which will indefinitely lead to shading artifacts, but I will show you how we'll fix that up in just a bit. So I'm just going to use Alt and select all of the uh, exterior verts. And I've just noticed something as I've moved my viewport here. Uh, all the shading on this is wrong, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my face orientation, toggle that on, so I can see it's all red, so I know they're facing the wrong way. So I'm just going to go ahead and oops, uh, flip that around so it's correct. Then going back using Alt to select the exterior verts, I'm just going to extrude and bring this down on the Z, just give it some thickness. And then I'm just going to press F, fill in a big end gun at the bottom. And we're going to press I, and then we're going to press B to do it to the bound. So now you see that middle edge snaps to the center. And so that just gives us a nice support loop around here. Uh, we'll worry about this big end gone in a bit. We're just going to leave it like that for the time being. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get these connecting bridges between the circles. So I'm just going to select these middle edges here. Just go Control B. And it's going to go somewhere around that size. That looks good. And while we've got these selected, I'm just going to go ahead and select the interiors of the circles. And we'll just go E, extrude. I'm just going to bring these down a bit. Not too far. I think normally just around maybe three quarters of the way down is roughly what I've done. Doesn't really matter how far it goes. And then we can just go ahead and we can delete all of the interior faces because we don't need them. And then we can just fill the bottom faces here as well. Cool. So, now let's address the problem of all the poles at the top here and sort of make the topology at the top just a little bit nicer. So let's come to a side orthographic view here and using our face select, I'm just going to select all of the top faces, so just like this. And then I'm going to press I to do an inset. And mind you, we've still pressed uh, B to do it to bounds. And I can actually see that's kind of causing some problems in the middle here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to go ahead and apply the mirror. And I'll do that again, so I'll just press I. And now it's sort of resolving a bit more nicely in the middle. I'll just give it about that much thickness there. And so now you notice all those poles that we initially had sitting on the edges of the model here, they've all been pushed out, and we now have nice support loops around all of our edges. So the model now works just fine, even though we do have triangles on it. Cool, and we can pretty much apply the same logic for these massive end gons down the middle here. So I'm just going to go ahead, press I, just do an inset. And so now I've got a nice support loop, and I'm just going to make this end gone in the middle a little bit smaller. So I'll just do another one, just insert it a little bit further. And then as for the bottom here, I'm just going to go ahead, delete both of the faces, and I'll just use Alt and select the inner edge, and just go ahead, use Grid Fill, and I'm just going to change the span to 10, and just the offset here. And now that's filled in nicely. Cool, so the last thing we need to do is, I'll just go ahead and set this shade smooth and we'll subdivide it. And all we need to do now is just go ahead and crease up our edges. So I'll just turn this off. Uh, and a quick way to do this, I'll just use Alt and select all of these inner edges here. Shift D, 0.55. And I'll select these edges. I'm just gonna go Shift G and select similar by face angle. So now you see we've just selected more in the center here, selected the one on the outside, and then just means we've got a little bit less manual selection to do. Cool, so shift D.55. And then do it for the top and bottom here as well. 0.5, and we'll just need to do it for the interior of these circles and the bottom of the bridge sections as well. So just there. And those ones there, cool, shift D, 0.55. All right, cool, so technically that's done. I've got two problems here. I don't love how sharp all the edges are on the interior and exterior, and I don't love the fact that, see how these corners, they're very rounded? Um, I, I don't like the way that looks. It doesn't look right to me. So I'll show you how to fix these. Uh, I don't think the sharpness is necessarily a fix, that's more of an aesthetic thing. So personally, I just don't like how sharp it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead, reselect this, Shift E, negative one, and then Shift E, 0.33. So it's softened it up a bit, but now it just looks 
awful, personally. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go Control R and I'm just going to add three loops through the middle here and then I'm just going to dissolve the middle one. So that just adds a little bit more support to the top and bottom and now I just think it's a nicer profile on this curve here. And then the next thing I want to address is how soft the corners are. And so the reason this is happening is because we've got a pole on these edges here. So we just also need to add some creasing to these poles to sort of tighten up the corners there a bit. So I'm just going ahead and select all these in the middle. And we'll also need to do the same on the top and bottom of the exterior. So I'll just select those ones and I'll just do the same on the bottom here. That one, that one, and oops, that one there. And I'll just go shift E.55. Cool. So now all the corners look nice and sharp. I think we've got a much nicer profile around the outside here. And actually, sorry, for these edges as well, I'm just going to go shift E.33 just to soften those up a bit as well. Cool. So now we've got a nice hard surface object. Uh, I've shown you how to do some nice uh, loop support for everything with using the inset tool. And yeah, I'll be looking forward to sending out the next challenge and seeing everybody's submissions. And I just noticed I missed an edge there, so I will just crease that one up. But yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.